This week I'm back to talk about some awesome updates and news in the Linux desktop space. We're also going to be talking about the Wayland Display Server Protocol as we have exciting developments in both. To start out, we have the XDG Session Management Wayland Protocol, which is slowly getting implemented here in GNOME Mutter. The XDG Session Management Protocol allows Wayland applications to request and save their window state for future usage. Think things like size, position, and other properties of the window. And this is going to make it easier for applications or clients to to ask the compositor to save a window state for them currently as a merge request and in draft you can imagine why this is so important if an app or client exits or crashes restarts then it's easy to get back to your previous workflow this new xdg session management protocol will be great for a variety of cases that includes compositor client crashing although it's not quite ready for gnome 47 we're hoping to see full availability here on gnome 48 this is great for linux desktop environments because we're going to get better user experiences with smoother recovery. It's an awesome feature and advancement to see and definitely improvement in the Wayland protocol. Let me know what you think about this new update, but we're gonna move on to Casilda. Casilda is a new composite widget for Wayland. So we're gonna continue talking about Wayland. Its first stable release was made for Casilda, which is a big deal because it allows and enhances the interaction between applications and the Wayland compositor by allowing developers to integrate control over the Wayland compositor in their GTK4 applications. This is particularly useful for creating applications that need to manage or display windows from other processes. You can now use this and it shows you here an example. What does this new stable project bring to the table? Well, it offers a seamless transition to Wayland. If your application was originally designed with GTK4 in mind or protocol, but specifically for the X11 server or protocol, well, you can imagine how hard or how big of a challenge it can be to get Wayland support working for that application. Casilda offers a straightforward way to embed Wayland compositors into your application. That way, enabling you to work natively with Wayland without having a complete rewrite. Current API is pretty simple in the Casilda compositor. It just has two properties, a socket and a beach color. Again, very exciting news as this new project rolls out with its first stable release. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. I'm excited to keep following this around as it continues to develop very easy to documentation, very easy API, and it's an exciting transition for GTK4 apps into Wayland. Continuing out, into desktop environments, Linux and KDE, the 6.2 beta release was made with notable UI improvements. This was announced during the Academy 2024 conference. We're getting closer and closer to the 6.2 release, expected in about a month or so. The main focus has been to improve stability on this version, but there have been a few notable bug fixes and UI improvements, including power profile switching, refined system settings, and fixes for plasma crashes and performance bottlenecks, especially on multi GPU systems. So if any of those bugs sound like they're happening to you, well, it might be great to upgrade to KDE 6.2 once it comes out. Here are the notable bug fixes. We're not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can check them out in further detail. It has been overall a big week, KDE, as they posted their goals here in this article called A New Cycle Begins. So what are the goals for the KDE community? Well, let's briefly talk about those. Streamline application development experience. The goal focuses on improving application application development process by making it easier for developers to create applications. This is in hopes to attract more contributors. And really the goal here is to use languages beyond C++ such as Rust or Python, which is an important goal for many different open source projects. As we're seeing technical advancements in order to sustain a developer community, it's becoming crucial to allow for different subsets of languages and skill sets in order to broaden the contributor base. We've been seeing this around Rust in the kernel. And really it just reduces the barriers of entry and makes code more accessible to other developer-friendly languages, lowers the curve to get in and start contributing. So we're seeing this pattern emerge across many, many open source projects. KD definitely not being the first, but they are adopting modern technologies. Anyways, another thing that they're bringing up is we care about your input. KD has a diverse user base with a unique input needs. Artists using complex monitor and drawing tablet setups, gamers with controllers, fancy mice and handhelds, users requiring accessibility features, and much more. Their idea is here is to address the gaps that have been created, and the goal is to close those gaps and deliver a truly seamless input experience for everyone. Seemingly what KDE is saying here is that the cater to a 
diverse user base with varying needs and they're going to try to address those needs and provide a seamless experience for all users on their desktop. And finally, they need you because they need more contributors. A lack of fresh involvement, including in projects like Plasma, Caden Live, Krita, G, Compress, and others are a concern. And the goal is to focus on trying to recruit more people and individuals to bring new talent and continue developing for KDE's long-term sustainability. Now, I know a lot of you use KDE, so I'd love to hear from you and how their goals line up from what you want to see done by KDE. Post them in the comment section below. Let's hear about them and let's talk about how to make KDE even better. Constant and lots of development going on in KDE. Let's move on to talking about something exciting in GNOME this week. Under the post called Sovereign Tech Fund, we get an update and highlights on the future of Linux security, specifically on GNOME, which has encrypt users' home directories individually. On Linux systems, users are traditionally managed in a specific file called Etsy password. It doesn't differentiate between technical and human accounts and stores basic user information. And what GNOME's trying to do here is create something called Home, a modern replacement for account services. It provides an encryption in user data and paves the way for future exciting platform security and flexibility improvements. So the idea here in this post is to improve areas of security, infrastructure, modernization for user experience improvements. This includes things like encrypting user directories and ensuring that the user's data is completely isolated and protected from the system. This is actually a tool by SystemD and hopes to replace the management system like Etsy password with modern features, including things like encryption. This will help Linux platforms become more here and flexible. That's one big post here in this pretty long article. If you want to learn more about what GNOME is currently doing in its own space, you can check this out. I'll put a link in the description below as we have many updates in the desktop environment space. But GNOME is also hiring more people and quite a big role here. The executive director is currently up for grabs at the GNOME Foundation, a nonprofit organization. This person plays a crucial role, including being responsible for things like strategic leadership and advocacy, fundraising and resource management, community engagement, operational management, governance, and board relations. They require a lot of skills and experience here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but just understand that you need at least five years of experience in nonprofit and organizational management and a proven track record with fundraising and partnership development. Compensation is fairly large with between 120 and 100 k depending on experience, with some other great benefits. And you can apply today if you match those requirements. And this comes after Holly Millian leaving the GNOME Foundation as the newly assigned executive director. This was actually announced about a year ago. She joined the foundation, wasn't quite there for a long time. Not sure exactly why she had left, but clearly wasn't a good fit for her. Anyways, big changes coming to the GNOME Foundation as this is an important role to take their mission of building a diverse and sustainable free software personal computing ecosystem to the masses. We'll see how this position gets filled and follow up in the coming weeks. Now, one thing I'm personally excited about about. Before we get to it, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe below if you like videos like this and like following along in Linux. We're going to talk about Fax. Fax is an emulator designed to run software built on x86 platforms, including 64 and 32-bit architectures, and get them to run on ARCH64 or ARM-based Linux hosts. This is crucial for users who want to run legacy or proprietary software from x86 or x86-64 platforms, which are still the predominant architectures. This cross-architecture architecture compatibility will help users not care as much about architecture of the machine as they can run that software as if it was the native, bypassing the need for recompiling. This is a fantastic win for Fedora Linux. We have a detailed description here, but I'm going to go and talk about why this is important because this is going to improve usability with this proposed change for Fedora Linux, helping users where recompiling for ARM-based Linux hosts is not an option. It's a significant step to increasing software compatibility, and it really helps bridge the gap between such systems as Apple Silicon Macs and Raspberry Pis so we can run more a more versatile host of software. Anyways, this is an absolutely exciting thing to read about and a proposal that Fedora is making here. Hopefully we go further into development and creating this project because I can see it helping a lot of people. Let me know if it's going to help you in the comment section, but we're going to move on talking about the Ubuntu desktop, including permissions prompting. That's right. Ubuntu desktop just announced a new permissions prompting feature, which will help with security, user control, and sandboxing. The introduction of permissions from Ubuntu 24.10 is exciting.
exciting because it offers an unprecedented control for security by users. What it's going to do is it's going to leverage something called App Armor and integrate snaps together. Here's a demonstration of what happens whenever you use it. So for example, you can set Firefox to have different types of rules depending on what you want. So if you want to save an image, for example, it says whether or not you want to give it access to specific folders. And right there, it was allow always. And now you can open up that particular file. If you don't want that rule anymore, you can definitely remove it as well. It's all in app permission. So as it says, a picture and video is worth a thousand words. Here's a picture of the experimental app permissions dialog, which shows you seven apps that are currently accessing the home folder, which manage. This is really cool. So how does it work? Well, it prompts users by adding a new layer of user control to existing permissions of the model of snaps. Let's briefly look at how snap permissions are handled today. As a part of the snap creation process, applications specify a set of interfaces required to access the required system files and resources to perform a necessary action that they need to function. When a snap is installed, the app armor profile is generated on the host system by SnapD based on interfaces specified in the SnapD. And when a snap request accesses to a specific system resource, it communicates with app armor module to the Ubuntu kernel, checks against the application app armor profile to confirm that it's a permission needed to perform an action. If the app armor profile does not provide the necessary rules to perform the action, then it is denied by the app armor module. If it does, then it is granted access. This diagram explains the flow and summarizes the above, including the app armor module that lives inside the kernel and the snap application that's actually requesting access. So we request access, the app armor profile and module, check the rules, and then the module actually provides or denies, denies that access. Much easier to understand that for those of you that weren't following along above. Hopefully you're following now. So why is this important? Well, you can imagine these security notifications, much like we get on Mac OS, helps give us an easy to use interface through a new security center that makes Ubuntu even more user friendly and give us a better experience and control over what we want applications to actually have access to. This is going to allow for tighter control of permissions on all sorts of applications, even the ones that don't have security built within mind. Hopefully it's going to make Ubuntu and other Linux environments a safer experience for users. Even though it's pretty safe at the moment, this is seemingly going to make things better. While Snap is a key component of Ubuntu's ecosystem, I believe other Linux distributions are going to take note of this one and start offering better security systems that are integrated with the Linux kernel as well. Distributions really need to distribute applications in a secure sandbox manner, and Ubuntu is showing us how it can do that at a kernel level. This is all exciting. We can see that this is a permission flow that they are proposing. And you can test this prompting feature today on Ubuntu 24.04 LTS by switching to Snap D 2.65. This is all really exciting to see, as again, it significantly enhances the security and user control, which I'm all about. I'm sure many of us are. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Hopefully we get a more secure, user-friendly Linux environment. Because of this, I'm definitely excited to see how this one wraps up. Well, that takes us through some of the key improvements here in Linux over the last week, especially when it comes to the desktop and display server protocols, new exciting functions, features, and compatibility always being added to Linux. I'm excited. Let me know if you are as well. Make sure to subscribe below. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple-to-read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.